Should I upgrade my mower to the new Ferris Z3X? That is what I've been thinking lately, guys. I've been running this 52 for a number of years as a Snapper Pro. It's very similar to the Ferris Walk Behinds, uh, but it is a Snapper Pro. It's kind of like a Ford Lincoln kind of thing where it's just the same. It's the same manufacturer, but different brand names. The Snapper Pro is... Uh, just as commercial, but they don't they don't go quite as far or quite as uh, heavy duty as the Ferris line. But when it comes to the walk behinds, the Snapper Pros are virtually the same. When it comes to the standards, they're virtually the same. But the Z3X, the higher level standard that you can get from Ferris, is a little bit more power, and I believe you can get a bigger deck. You can get a 60 or a 72 with the Z3X frame compared to the Snapper Pro. You can, you can only get up to a 60 with a 28 horsepower engine. With the Ferris, you can go up to a 33 or a 37 horsepower uh, engine. Uh, all, both Snapper Pro and Ferris now, you can get the oil guard system. But the topic today is should I upgrade to the Ferris Z3X? I've been looking at a 52 Z Ferris Z3X. And the reason... Well, the reason, obviously, that I want to uh, upgrade is for efficiency, power, you know, just making more profit in general. But I'm a little bit nervous about upgrading to different controls, guys. I've gotten so used to using the cruise bar that you have on your walk behinds. This is what I've always used. I've never had a zero turn. I've never operated a zero turn. I've never had anything with the lap bars that you push forward and backwards. I've only had walk behinds. I started off with the 36 Snapper Pro uh, way back in the day when Geek to Freak was making videos. I saw this mower and it was my first commercial mower that I ever had. And, uh, you know, I had to go through the learning curve. I crashed it a couple times for sure. Just learning from scratch with nobody to help me, nobody to show me. But over the years, guys, I've really come to like the cruise bar design. It really has grown on me. The reason is, is because when I'm running the machine, you push this thing forward and it just goes. It just goes. Now, you use your hands here to control it. And just by squeezing this all the way closed, your wheel is going in full reverse. So... It's easy to really, it's really easy to zero turn this because when you're standing up here, you can see both your wheels. This one's a little harder to see the right hand wheel because the uh, gas tank is in the way. But uh, particularly on a 36, when you're standing here, you can see both your wheels. So you can really see uh, in real time if your wheels not if your wheels stationary so you're not tearing up the lawn you could really zero turn these walk behinds really easily so you know just having the w the way that this control the, these controls are with the grips I'm able to just flow through the work you know I'm able to get really close to things I can go full clip towards something and stop on a dime and not hit it I could swipe real close to stuff I can get the deck real close to stuff and I'm a little bit nervous because I'm not going to be used to doing this. It's not going to be intuitive for me. And I'm not sure, it's, you know, how it's going to be. It's going to be a little bit of a learning curve, but um, I will have to get used to it. The one downside to this system is a little bit of stiffness in the hands. My right or my left hand right now has a little bit of stiffness in it from squeezing this for like literally the whole day because... Right now, no one's helping mow. They're helping me trim and edge, but they're not helping me mow. So I've literally cut all the lawns by squeezing the grips. And uh, that will take its toll on your hands if you have arthritis. Now, really, the reality is arthritis uh, can be treated by just taking certain vitamins and things like that and just really eating healthy. Trust me, arthritis will go away. So it's very minor. I can barely feel something in my left hand. Left hand, My right hand feels good. But when I first got on these mowers and I wasn't really watching my diet, I was just, I didn't really, you know, wasn't watching it. My hands were getting stiff from running these. Now, 
that everything is different with like, you know, I'm eating things like wild fish and stuff like that. Uh, that issue has pretty much gone away. Now this week I've been slipping on the diet a little bit, but if I were to get a hundred percent clean, I know that would go away. So that's the only thing, you know, uh, another thing is the, well, that's not the only thing, but another thing is the sulky. It has its pros and cons. You know, these are on casters, so it will let you zero turn. But when you're trying to go full speed, this thing seems like it creates a little bit of wiggle in the line. So it's really difficult, I've been finding, for me to go get a lot of speed and put out a straight line. So that's really where I'm at. Like, the top speed on this mower is 7 miles an hour. And if I go top speed in a big open area... Things just don't look straight to me. So uh, in a small little lot, you know, a small residential house, like what I have here, I can easily go like full speed because the, the stripes aren't that long. So it doesn't really show up. But on a big lawn, man, it shows. Now, as far as the rough ride, I don't really have too much of an issue with that. I'm not one to complain too much about that. But a lot of guys complain that it's too rough. One of my guys put a rubber pad on here last year, and that does help out a lot. But the Z3X is going to bring a spring-loaded platform. Everybody that uses it raves about it. Uh, I talked to some people who have one, and they say that you can mow at full speed. When I mow full speed with this machine, things get a little squirrely. Just the lines don't look as straight. So hopefully I can get full speed out of the Z3X on some lawns. I know some lawns are going to be too bumpy to get full speed, but, you know, hopefully, you know, that is. I'm going to look into getting one. Uh, maybe I'll try one out, but tell me what you guys think. Should I upgrade? I think it's time. You know, I think the Z3X is going to have a smaller footprint than the uh, walk behind here. This thing, it gets kind of long. You know, the front wheels, I think on the Z3X, sit a little tighter to the deck. And then the platform, I think you actually end up standing in between, somewhat in between the wheels. So that's going to be interesting. Hopefully, you know, it has a smaller footprint because if it does, you know, I got my 36. I'm going to keep that girl. This thing still runs good. I just had it, guys, I, I got 500 hours on this. And the reason, it just don't get used that much. Once you got the 52 and a bigger mower, you just don't use it that much. And it was running rough, but, man, I just had everything adjusted. There's valve lash adjustments here in my shop. They did everything. They cleaned it up. I've pushed these mowers so hard. I've never had a spindle fail. I've never had anything fail like that. No major issues with the 52. I've had some uh, some starting. I put a starter on the 52. And something else with the, uh, with the wiring happened. One of the fuses blew or something. But other than that, no major failures, and that's pretty impressive. I've run these mowers so hard that the engines have been knocked loose on both mowers. That mower, the 52, swallowed up a rock one day and shot it out of the other end, broke all the blades, bent all the blades, bent some stuff under the deck. Like One of the baffles got bent under the deck, and I just put new blades on it and kept going, never had an issue. So these mowers are built well. They're built strong as long as you maintain them. I like to grease my wheels and I like to grease my spindles. <sighs> Almost fell. I like to grease my wheels and I like to grease my spindles every other day or so. And then other things, if you grease them too much, it just gets messy. I like the idea. I like the Toros, how they don't have any grease fittings. But I, I would like to see a machine that doesn't have grease fittings on the deck height adjustment. But has grease fittings on the spindles and the, wheel, and the wheels. But... Aside from that, guys, going to a Ferris means that I'm going to be going to a dealer that's like 20 miles away, but a really good dealer. There's no real good dealers uh, near me. I love my dealer, but they are a smaller type of dealer who there's always a long line and things like that. They're great guys, but there's always a long line. And maybe there's, you know, I want to try other options at this point. But the mower's been great. And like I said, minor issues. I'm going to miss this height adjustment, guys. This height adjustment is pretty much infinitely adjustable because it's on a threaded rod so you turn it and it just lowers and raises the deck so you really get a lot of control over your mowing height i'm gonna miss that i wish they all had that but they don't uh only downside to this is you got to keep greasing this like once a week you got to take this out drop it all the way out and clean off all the grease and 
put in new grease or else it just gets hard to turn so you want that to be easy to turn but other than that guys it cuts good the deck is really good this is not actually an icd deck this mower was built right before those icd deck brand names came out but i think it's pretty much the same thing but i'm thinking about upgrading to the z3x comment below and tell me what you think and hopefully there'll be a new mower on the channel soon anyway thanks for watching have a great day and see you in the next video